So yesterday we have seen how in view of this inner product spaces and this best approximation of a vector, we can summarize the story in so far as solving for the system of equations given by Ax is equal to B is concerned, particularly when this A is either a real or a complex matrix. So that story has been completed. Uh, just before we wind up with this aspect of inner products, maybe I'll just take an example of an application, if you call it that, uh, something that you're all probably familiar with. So it's the case of Fourier series. So does anybody recall what sort of signals or waveforms come under this consideration when we talk about Fourier series? Periodic waveforms, right? So what does this Fourier series do? What do you think it is? So if I have a signal like so, right? What does the Fourier series allow me to do? Any arbitrary sine and cosine? What sort of frequencies? So what is the frequency of this waveform? This is not a sinusoid or a cosinusoid, but it's a periodic waveform. What's the period of this? So what's the frequency? Uh, the angular frequency, 2 pi by t, right? Yeah, so 2 pi by t. So what kind of sinusoids and cosinusoids make their appearance when you write this as a Fourier series? Integral multiples of this frequency. Yeah. So have you ever given it a thought as to what is being done? Because uh, in theory, this Fourier series is an infinite series, is it not? You just figure out that there is a formula subject to this Dirichlet's conditions and all that you have to check and then you have to calculate the coefficients and there is a formula for that calculation. That's probably the way you've seen it. Some integrations and stuff that you have to do, right? So. Now consider for a moment that uh, instead of, of course it's practically not possible for you to have an infinite sum coded into something. Suppose you truncated this infinite series after a certain number of terms. What kind of a waveform would you end up with? Uh, Sorry? So maybe something, something such as, I don't know, I'm just taking a guess of something sort of this. Maybe, but of course not exactly equal. For equaling it in exactitude, you would ne need all those infinite terms. Now the point is, if I take more and more number of terms, is it true that I'll get closer and closer to the real waveform? Why? When I say closer, that brings us to this idea of what do you even mean by two signals being closer to one another? What is the difference of two signals that, you know, which when becoming become small allows us to infer that the two signals are closed, close enough to one another? In this case, very intuitively speaking, if you can look at this area, Don't you think you should be trying to minimize this area? The smaller is the area, the closer is your approximation in terms of those sinusoids to this actual waveform. Suppose you say, you've been told that uh, you're allowed only up to a certain number of terms, say 20 terms, that's what your processor can handle. The point is, why should we choose Fourier series? to approximate the periodic waveform. Why not something else? Have you thought about it? What is so desirable or attractive about this Fourier series? Exactly. So it turns out that it will give you the, indeed the best possible approximation. So in other words, if you take all the terms in the Fourier series, you will get exactly that periodic waveform. So all periodic waveforms 
if you take the class of all periodic waveforms, they actually form an infinite dimensional vector space. So any periodic signal that you look at comes from an infinite dimensional vector space. But for very practical reasons, you cannot deal with objects in infinite dimensional vector space in your practical calculations and computations. So you can only handle a certain number of finite number of terms, right? And if you want to do that, you want to truncate the series at a point, the number of terms that you can handle. If you want to do it in a best manner, in a most efficient and optimal manner, so as to minimize the error between the signal you're approximating, yeah, then it's, it turns out that Fourier series is the best. But for that, we have to, of course, give it some structure of an inner product, a norm, and things such as those. So here is what I put to you, that if you have a signal f of t, which you want to approximate, right? So ft is a periodic signal, right? So periodic with period t, yeah? Now, let's go ahead and define the inner product in the space of these periodic signals as 0 to t f g bar dt. What is d, g bar? The complex conjugate, right? So, if that is how I define my inner product, right? So, f and g are two periodic waveforms of signals with period t, then this is how I define the inner product and thereby endowing this vector space with an inner product structure. It now becomes an inner product space, right? Now once I have this inner product, I can of course bring in all these ideas of best approximation and what have you. So what is the best approximation over a finite dimensional subspace of an infinite dimensional vector space? Recall the idea that we developed. Look at this finite dimensional subspace. Since it's finite dimensional, it, it is spanned by a finite basis. Let's choose an orthonormal basis. If you have an orthonormal basis for this subspace, then all that you need to do is take any signal or take any vector from this infinite dimensional vector space, take its inner products with these individual elements of that orthonormal basis, yeah? And those will be the scaling factors and those times the basis vectors themselves. That's the best approximation, right? So the only thing that you need to basically verify is that this indeed satisfies the properties of an inner product, which I leave to you as an exercise to do, right? Anyway, I would advise that you, after this, uh, you know, whatever we're studying here, you just go back to your undergraduate, uh, preliminary undergraduate textbooks where you first encountered Fourier series and reread that portion to see this, uh, you know, see this in a new light. But anyway, the point is that we have to now establish that what sort of a basis are we looking for? And the claim is that this basis as it stands in this in terms of this Fourier series, those elements are indeed going to form an orthogonal basis. What do I mean by that? So in case of a Fourier series, uh, Let's just say that you choose these functions to be e to the i, where i is of course the square root of minus 1, okay? i is equal to square root minus 1 in this case, 2 pi by t k, okay? Right? Now, let's choose two different values of k and pass it through this test and see what happens. So if you take e to the, so if you take your f to be e to the i 2 pi k 1 t, sorry, there's a t missing, very, very important. Uh, k 1 t upon big T and g to be e to the i 2 pi k 2 t 
upon t. Then what is the inner product of f and g? So of course if you take the conjugation of this, you just have to replace i with minus i. The imaginary part sign gets flipped, right? So this then turns out to be, yeah, 0 to t e to the i 2 pi upon t into k1 minus k2 times t dt. What is this going to be? Kronecker delta in terms of k1 and k2. So unless k1 is equal to k2, this is 0, right? You can verify this. So this is equal to 0 unless k1 is equal to k2, which means that indeed these kinds of functions for different different values of k, if you choose them, they turn out to be orthogonal to one another in the sense of this inner product that we have defined over the space of periodic signals, right? Which means what should we do given any periodic signal, if you want to approximate it up to a first say L number of terms, what should we do? We should take inner products naturally with the first L terms in this particular basis. The basis that contains terms such as e to the i 2 pi k t upon big T, where k ranges from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on till L minus 1, right? So when you are truncating a Fourier series at a point, what you are doing is you are actually getting a best possible approximation thereof, right? So this, if you allow it to expand up to L minus 1, you actually got the orthogonal basis in the space of periodic signals which contain harmonics up to the L minus first multiple of the frequency. Frequency of course determined by big T, right? So every time you truncate a Fourier series, that means this is the good thing about a Fourier series. Once you have obtained the generic term for a Fourier series, if someone tells you, I want the Fourier series up to the 10th term, you just go ahead and evaluate C0, C1, C2 till C10. And there's a general formula for that. If someone says, I want till 20th term, you just go ahead from C0 to C19. And those are just the numbers that you need, right? Once you scale your waveforms, corresponding waveforms by those numbers, you're done. What I mean by that is, now if you want your f hat, which is an approximation or the best possible approximation of f up to let's say the lth term, you can just go ahead and say that it's going to be nothing but, well, the norm of, uh, sorry, the norm of, so I'll first have to evaluate, of course, the norm of this object, which is already here. If you just plug in k1 is equal to k2, then it's basically the norm of this fellow. What is the norm of this fellow? It's square root of t, is it not? Because this, is the, if you take k1 is equal to k2, that's the inner product of a member of this basis set with itself. And that's the square of the norm that turns out to be equal to t. So let me also complete this and equal to, sorry, equal to t for k1 is equal to k2. So if it's equal to t for k1 is equal to k2, that means the norm is square root of t. Yeah, so I can just scale it up and down suitably by, instead of this, I'm going to just write square root of t. And what's above? This is going to be just f, the original function living in the infinite dimensional vector space, its inner product with e to the minus, sorry, not minus, i 2 pi k upon capital T into small t 
times. So, this is of course the component of F along the kth member of that basis, but this must be multiplied along the basis, it is a scaling along that basis and the basis has to be normalized as well. Yeah. So, this is like the norm of this, so you are taking the a b cos theta is the dot product and then dividing by b, so you get a cos theta along the direction of b, right. So, what you have here next is e to the i 2 pi k t upon capital T and another square root of t. The sum from k is equal to 0 up to L or rather L minus 1 if it is L terms that you want then it is 0 to L minus 1. So, in a nutshell this is nothing but the inner product of f with e to the i 2 pi k t upon capital T divided by t k going from 0 to L minus 1 times e to the i 2 pi k t upon capital T. So, that is the best possible approximation of any periodic waveform up to that many terms chosen by L. Yeah. Is clear? So, that is an application of the idea of, so that is why the idea of Fourier series is so appealing, yeah, because it automatically gives you an orthogonal basis to expand and that is why when you take these inner products, you are actually doing a best possible approximation. At any point you truncate, you could not have done any better by choosing that many terms, right. The space spanned by those first L members of that basis, that is the best approximation thereof. Right? Yes. Inner product. So, so if you just think about it, if you now try to find out the difference between, like you know that region you remember, I, I've now erased it. That region that I have sketched between them. So, what do you think it's going to be? How are you going to find out that region? because you do not want to penalize uh, a positive and a negative area differently, both are errors. So, you have to square it somehow. So, you are interested in the magnitude of the whole thing. So, why not just square the difference? And if you want to do that, then this is going to be your idea of a norm. And it so happens that this norm is induced by an inner product like this. So, this is my go to choice for the inner product. Yes, yes, of course, when, when the inner product is defined in this fashion, which automatically means that your norm, so there, yeah, you are right. So, when the norm is of a different nature, when our idea of what it means by two signals being separated from one another, yeah, you, you could, you could, some people could come up with a norm that it says that I want to minimize the maximum difference between two signals at any point. That is also a different norm, but that norm is not necessarily induced by some inner product that becomes a difficult problem yeah the, the elegance of this pro, uh, of this uh, format or this uh, structure is that uh, it fits in because this norm is induced exactly by an inner product and it also fits in with our notion of what it means to get closer so of course somebody might say that i want to design for the worst case so at any point what is the maximum what is the difference between the signal that i am approximating and my approximating signal if I want to minimize the maximum difference at any point, that is also one. Yeah. So, there are different different types of norms that you can come up with depending on the space that you have in mind, but the norm that comes from the inner product automatically gives us this idea of uh, inner product and the orthogonality and thereby allowing us to extend any basis in a finite dimensional subspace to an orthogonal basis and the Fourier series readily gives us one such orthogonal basis thereby making our job of approximation simpler. So, like we can find any two such functions which are orthogonal to a negative form of basis for series 
I mean, you can find any linearly independent set, that's itself a basis. Once you have a linearly independent set, depending on the inner product that you've defined, you can just apply the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization. See, that Gram-Schmidt is not for just Euclidean spaces, right? It's generally, the moment you have an inner product, you can go ahead and uh, apply Gram-Schmidt to any basis set for a finite dimensional vector space and get an orthogonal set of orthogonal basis for that same finite dimensional vector space, right? So, in fact, uh, you might see often in, in some exercise problem that we will give you a basis for a polynomials, for a, for a vector space of polynomials of say a degree some 10 or 5 or whatever. That accompanied by some inner product might lead you to conclude that this basis is independent but not orthogonal nonetheless. And we might say, oh, apply Gram-Schmidt to this, subject to that inner product. And you have to orthogonalize the basis and then you can get a best approximation readily. Yeah? Any other questions?